Good morning, everybody. I'm Sentient Dessert, and uh, something I've wanted to do for a while, but um, I really haven't. Um, so, I've been playing Final Fantasy XIV for a long time. And for a long time, I mean for a long time. Uh, I was beta for the original and beta for the uh, re-release. So, um, what I am going to do is I'm going to take a new character, and I'm, I'm skipping all of the cutscenes, because this is about how to play the different characters, the different classes. So, um, this is still tutorial mode, the only thing that I have done on this character is uh, complete the first quest, which launched me up to level two, and um, basically ad readjust this. I haven't gone through and changed anything yet in the settings, and I figured I would be going through those just to explain what each thing did as my memory serves me, because you know, I don't like having this thing up here in the left. Um, so, we're going to skip through and remember what to do. But, um, I take. I also joined my free company. Since everything is being done on ferry. So, I want to get rid of those. But, on accepting that last quest, we are now being transferred out of an instanced area to the actual map where we can interact with people. We're not told when we try to run out of this area, hey, you've got to go back there and, and start this quest. All right, so before I continue with that, we are going to open systems. We're going to go to character configuration, movement settings, uh, we are going to go to okay, character configuration general, movement settings standard type, character based, legacy type camera based, I prefer character based because if you go camera based then it's, camera's not going to follow you like this you, that, that's something that if you're starting up you can check on your own um Flying mount takeoff, I like manual because I enjoy running and jumping on, on my mounts. Um, I have no idea what direct chat means. So, we're going to leave that un, uh, unchecked. Skip playback of previously viewed scenario cutscene. Yes. Skip playback of previously, previously viewed transportation cutscenes. Yes. Skip playback of housing cutscene. Yes. So what these do, when you enter a duty, a dungeon, the, one of the first things that happens is there's a cutscene that plays. And since I'm playing a new character, those are cutscenes I'm not going to skip. It's the quest cutscenes I'm going to skip. Um, so in the scenarios, you do dungeons a lot in this game. So well, duties, dungeons, same thing in here. Um, those will get skipped when I go and re redo them. Um, transportation cutscenes would be uh, teleportation or boarding ships, stuff like that. It will skip the appropriate cutscenes that go with those. Housing cutscenes, same thing, but when you're in the housing area. Camera controls, mouse and keyboard, third person camera. If you do not like the way that the mouse works, you can invert the axes for all of them. It's funny, usually on a gamepad I do invert because it does not function properly in my opinion. Standard type camera auto adjustment, only when moving. Um, first person camera adjustment. Um. What the auto adjustment does is 
if you have the camera like to the side of you and you start moving forward it um it bases it on your character's directional setting so that if you move the camera while you're running the camera would gradually turn instead of automatically switch back um enable camera effects when initiating actions Don't really remember what that is. Uh, event camera settings. Look at target when speaking. So your character will look at the target when you... If you have somebody targeted. And... Uh, we'll, we'll stare at them when you when they talk or when you talk. Target settings. Automatically lock onto a target when initiating auto attack. Not always a good idea because you might be a lower level. Um... Automatically face target when using an action. It's good to have that on because if you are not facing the target, your action's not going to go off. Um, enable auto target when no target is specified. So if you are in a group of enemies and you kill one, this will target the next one that is near that that, that you can target for your attack if you're actually initiating to kill them all. Can be good, can be bad, um, but it's it, it keeps you from not doing um, not doing damage when you want to do damage. Disable targeting of pets and minions when in battle. Always a good thing, um, since you no longer need to heal the fairies for scholar or your minion as a summoner. They're just out there as a damaging thing, except for... So I don't know about Summoner. I haven't really played it much the past couple years. I know things have changed. Switch target circle to target select. No clue what that, that is. Um, target type, target closest enemies. Ignore depth, bone. That's a new one for me. I think it um, depends on which enemies get targeted first. So are the ones that are closest to you versus the ones that are in the distance. Ground targeting settings, gamepad mode. You're using a gamepad. Target ring is locked to the cursor. Um, target display settings. Highlight potential targets. Um, display target ring. Target ring is... See if we can do it. See that little tiny thing around its feet? That's the target ring. Uh, display target lines. Not sure about that. Display aggro line. Oh! So, there will be a list of targets over here. Well, I normally have them put here. I haven't adjusted my... Um, my, my HUD yet. So, um, aggro lines as well will be over there as well. And these are kind of linked together. Uh, click filter settings. Um, enable selection of target nearest mouse cursor. Um, not usually the best thing. It's better to just like have click on the target that you want. Unless you are really bad at you know, selecting the things that you're, um, going after. Quick filter targets. Non-party PCs. Okay, I see what that is. Never mind. That's, um... Click filter settings when, when you're clicking while you're in combat. Um, it will target the creatures that you have selected. So um, you're not going to select somebody that's outside the party if you've got certain things set up. It's only going to um, specifically select the things that you're clicking on unless you... Yeah. Okay.
let, let me finish that because I trailed off there. Um, so if I'm in combat, I'm not going to be able to do that. Got this set up. So that person was not in my party. If I were in combat, I wouldn't be able to select them, which I do not like because sometimes I'm a healer and sometimes I am partaking in world uh, fate events that require me to heal or res other people outside of my party. So, target filter settings. Enable target cycling. While weapon is sheathed, everything. While weapon is drawn. Um, don't like that. Like that. That. Having through in combat. Oh, that's small weapon. No, even when I'm not. Like. Nope. And nope. Tab for me is um. Tab tab is what is the um default setting for going through enemies. So if you don't know which enemy you want to, you can just press tab and it'll cycle through the enemies that are available. And for me, it is always enemies that you want it to cycle through, even when you're not, because there's this if I'm if Unless I'm in combat, there's no reason that I should be able to tab through my allies. So, even as a healer, I don't like tabbing through the allies because I've got F1 through F4 for people in my immediate party, and um, F5 through F8 for a full eight-person party, so... Okay, um, filter customization. I don't really need a filter for any of the stuff. And that looks like it is for controllers. So, I don't play with a controller. I do not enjoy playing with a controller in this game. Character settings, display headgear. That's reference. Um, manually adjust visor. Um, yeah, we'll turn that on. <clears throat> that means that you can just type in slash visor and it will either lift it or lower it. Um, display main weapon and off hop. Offhand gear when they're sheathed, that's okay. I do not like auto sheathing when we exit combat. Um, idle animation delay, five seconds, so. And then random idle animation, so if you do not really care what your character looks like when idle, then you can select that and it will change it every so often as you're standing there to give your character less of a static effect. Um, battle effects shown. Um, this is something to uh, help with your... Um, you, you don't necessarily need to see everything that's going on. I think I normally have it as shown on for others. No, I've got show limited for others and then show everything for everybody else. If you've got a slower GPU in your machine, this can help things a lot. Um, mouse, enable clicking on self. No. Enable clicking on field to remove target. Yes. Scroll up, camera zooms in. Scroll out, camera zooms out. Scroll up control, not assigned. We don't need to assign any of those. We shall apply those. Or character configuration. Now, what I mean about the idle is, um, what is it? So in social, you have an emote section. You've got some that are basic that everybody has, and then you've got ones that you can pick up over time. So we are looking for the idle general special expression. Change pose, that's what it is.
and when you enter idle it will change different poses based on that you got to remember to to not really do these things early in the morning cuz I need a bit of time to get my voice sorted out. Especially after being sick. So, we want to go back to character configuration. Item settings. Inventory interface. Normal. Okay, let's up the inventory. Okay. Expanded. I don't know what this... Ooh. I like that. All. Oh, by golly, I found a new favorite. <laughs> okay, so they've added a few things since the last time I've gone through my settings. Retainer inventory interface expanded. Store all newly obtained items in the armory chest. <clears throat> So what this will do is you've got um, you have an armory chest and this is where you store all of your gear and when you get new equipment it will store it here or it will store it in your inventory and this is where you can choose where things go. Remove dim effect from unequipable gear. Oh, I've been wanting that for a long time. It just makes it so hard to... Uh... Oh. So, okay. So when you, when you have something in your... Um... Let's unequip that ring. So you come here, and this subcommand cu customization gives you a list of things that you can have. And you can change what shows up here, it looks like. So that's, uh, that's a beneficial thing. But we will equip that. Uh, sort customization, item category standard, required level, item level, stack size. All right. Um, this just affects how you sort your items. Um, sort method, fill tabs in order. Store items in sections based on category. That, I think, is just personal preference. And self-explanatory. Shop settings, display confirmation prompt when selling items. Yes, meldable, spirit bound. Definitely, unique, untradable items. Always up to your um, preference. Okay, we've got character configuration. UI settings. This is usually the most um, preferential to whoever's playing, what you're doing. But this is something that I go through when I make a new character. Or I will copy the settings of another character into the same folder and then make adjustments for the new character. Um, I haven't done that with this because I wanted to go through and make everything uniform for this character and to do it on stream, on video, for people to look at later. Um, main menu, mouse mode type, game mode, gamepad mode type. Alright. This is just basically how you're going to be entering the main menu. Shortcut display type, close immediately. Close when active. Um, restore map when not moving. What does that mean? I think it has to do with the mini map. Um, map font size, standard. Map transparency. Okay, yeah. So I like this being very low so I can see through it, but still see what's on it. Mouse over it. Okay, 
let's um that and see if that affects huh because I recall okay that's where it is no so if you've got it set with a restore map when not moving if you stop moving the map comes back into um goes back to normal Zero percent opacity. So, um, that font size, yeah, that works for me. Reverse stick up, down control, yeah, that's if you're using the gamepad. Um, help, enable item help. Enable toggling between normal and quality text. Okay, so it's good to have this on because you can see the, um. Like this. Oh, it's not going to toggle for me. We'll do it from... There is no high quality of that. So, go wrist. Okay, so it's not going to show me that stuff. Probably because I can't... I think I can... Create them. Okay, so... um shows you the difference between a normal quality and a high quality if a high quality version is available. So, oh, sorry, one second. Um, toggle key, yes, enable help toggling, that's fine. Display action help next to cursor. Uh, action help fix. Display pop-up help. Um, okay, so we hit apply. Okay, you see how it's showing up in the lower left-hand corner? Before, it would show up right next to the item. See if that does it, yep. So anytime you look at stuff, instead of having it pop up, on the cursor, which I find infuriating when going through my um, inventory. It's like I'm trying to look at the things in my inventory, not. Yeah. Got my inventory open. You'll see how it'll pop up under the thing. And so I'm going to change this down to just two of the boxes. It's my own foibles. So don't worry about doing it differently. There's no right way to do this, there's just the right way for you. So, um, display the pop-up help. The action help, I always like the fixed so that it's away from what that. And you can change that, I will get to that when we hit the, um, the HUD settings. Recommendations, show up on login. I do not like the recommendations showing up. Um, well, on login, I do not like them when they show up when I change areas. Um, play guide. Open upon login. No. That is that little pop-up that uh, I closed at the beginning of this. Um, achievements. Display achievements nearing completion as login notification. It's always nice to uh, be able to know where you're at in an achievement, so we'll apply for that one. We'll go to the HUD. Display flying text. This is something that can... Um, affect your performance. So, um, display pop-up text. I will see what those are and come back to them. Display parameter bars. Yes. Display XP bar. Yes. Display inventory grid. Ah. That is this thing right here. So, we'll apply. We'll keep that XP bar is the thing down at the bottom. This thing. Um, parameter bars. Your hit points and your uh, magic points. Duty lists.
Not quite sure what that hides. Oh, it's the quest list. Okay, so your quest list is duty list in this. We show. Oh, you can only show maximum of five. I duty list during instance duty. I duty list during non instance duty. That's up to the player. Display registered duty in timers. Display duty registration detail in timers. Okay. Display minimap. Yes. Display gill. Right there. Uh, display server info. Right up here. Current world ferry. Um, lock type. Default to language setting. Um, kind of like 24 hour. Yours your time. Half. Oh, that's nice because before you could only do so here's your time, local time, server time is what time it is for the server. Current world name. Very. So server info is everything up here. Uh, display limit gauge. A limit gauge will only appear when you're in a party. Display main scenario guide. Goodbye. Oh. That little thing right there? Gone now. Targets. Target information. Display only detrimental effects you inflict. This can be important if you're in combat and you're wondering um, if uh, when you're still learning to uh, check the, the, the duration of some of your spells, some of your abilities. Um, it is set up to where your skills that are affecting the enemy will take up the first slots on the enemy. So you can always check the first slots and if it's um, if it's one of these little tiny things with an arrow pointing down underneath the the enemy's uh, health bar. If it's a large version, it's yours. If it's a smaller version, it's not yours. We will get into that. Um, overhead name display. Full name, yes. <coughs> display enmity list. That's going to be a little tiny thing over here. Play progress bar. Yes, that's so that... Um, you know how... Uh, Gosh, my voice just isn't playing nice today. Um, the progress bar is how how close you are to pulling threat. Display focus target information. Yes, that is inf that is important. Um, so if I click on this guy, I come here and I go focus target. He is always going to be selected, and there's going to be a little tiny box that I will move um, as part of set resetting the heads-up display. So, then you remove the focus target, and the reason you have a focus target is if you are, you could be a healer and you want to keep an eye on uh, someone that's not in your party and keep them healed up or if you want to if you're a healer and you want to see if um certain boss effects are going to go off then you can focus target the boss and pay attention to if um they start casting something that you need to be paying attention to so while you're healing you're over here well we're not going to get into the, the, the healing aspect of this game yet it's um Healers are kind of superfluous in a lot of fights because they just DPS because the enemies don't do enough damage. But that's that's another problem altogether that just needs to be mitigated. Um, play targets remaining HP percentage. 
try that one. All right. Party list. Display party list. Yes. Display name settings. Full name. Hide party list when solo. Status effect icon display maximum. Display alliance list one. Display alliance list two. Find party list order role. Role order. Um. Yeah, tank healer DPS. So uh, what this will do is, if you've got party over here, it will allow you to sort what goes first. So you as a player are always going to be on top. And then it's going to sort everybody else underneath you. So after you have... Um, so yes, it is going to sort everything underneath you. Um, so if you're a DPS, then it's going to go you, tank, healer, DPS by default. But if you don't like having the tank at the top, you can put the healer at the top. So it would be healer, tank, DPS. And it's just however you want to set it up. Um, I like it like this because if I'm a healer, then tank is always going to be number two. The stipulation to that is if you're in a duty and people get replaced. If somebody comes in, like the tank decides, you know, I don't want to run this place, and they leave after immediately joining, then first off, they're going to get a debuff that prevents them from entering a duty for, I think, 30 minutes. It's to uh, incentivize people to stick around in the duty. And because early on you had a bunch of people that would join in, not get the duty they wanted, then leave, and then requeue, and just keep doing that until they get what they wanted as a random instead of, you know, specifically going for certain dungeons. So, um, if you have somebody leave and come in, then they are always going to be at the bottom of the list, so you'll have to um, keep that in mind. We will apply everything that's happened there. Display name settings. Display name settings. So, display name settings. Own name. Well, display name presets. Show default. Always show your own name. So, that's seeing your name floating above you. Nope, that's system. Um, character configuration. So, um, I to do it when targeted because it just makes it easier for me to select other people as well um display tape i like full names being shown i do like titles being shown hp bar setting when hp is below 100 um this can be useful when you're in combat but i always do during battle because being able to see everybody's health as a healer in battle is useful. Um, companions. Oh. This is for self, my mistake. Um, during battle is for the everybody else. I'm not sure I played with that on myself don't think I have it on myself ever. I tend to look at my... We will we'll keep it at that and we'll see how things go. And things can... You, you, you can always come back here and change it uh, to make sure that the settings are good for you. It's just... It's been like six or seven years since I've gone through these. So bear with me. Um, pets, display name, settings... Uh, never. Well, when targeted. Apply that. Other. Party members, display name settings. Oh. 
Okay, I see what this is. So, companion would be like summoning your, um... Your chocobo to fight with you. And pets would be like Eos or Celine or the others. Ifrit, Garuda, and Titan. Okay, party members display, name always. Display type, full name. Title display settings. HP during battle. And you display name settings. Targeted. Companion HP bar settings. During battle. When targeted. What this can do is, is clear up a lot of clutter too, because it doesn't have to render all the names of, like, um everything that's out there. Alliance members. Display name settings. When targeted. This helps a lot with if you're struggling with speed. Uh, display type. Name. Full name. Title display. HP. Um, yeah. Pet display name settings. When targeted. Other player characters. So when you're not in combat, not in alliance, um, if I change this, the names will disappear. Like during battle, their name disappeared. Uh, display full name, display that. Um, HP bar. Yeah, we'll keep it as below that canyon when targeted when targeted okay friends and one thing that you can do is change the color at which names show up I like having my party be sort of a different color so um Again, it's, it's just personal preference on a lot of these things. Friends, display name always, full name, play. Yeah, everything there is good. NPCs. So this is where you... Engaged enemy, I like having a darker color for that. Um, unengaged enemy, that works. Claim to enemies. Unclaimed enemies. A little bit. Run that. NPC is fine. Objects are fine. Minions fine. Housing, furniture, garden. Everything else is fine. On uh, display name settings always. Yeah, we'll do it so that when get attacked. Age enemies. Always, always, always. NPCs. Objects, yeah. Minions, no, when targeted. Okay, general, display name presets, custom. Uh, settings. Okay, that's just f to d differentiate between the, uh, when you're in PvP. Um, PvP display name settings, abbreviation settings, okay. The feast display names, don't partake in the feast, so. This is basically PvP stuff.
Okay. Um. So this is gonna be the hotbar settings. I am one of those players that uses a lot of hotbars. Let's see. Um. Yeah. The first hotbar can be all hotbars. But you can move them with um, in the HUD settings if you can't rightly move it right now. Because right now, three and four are up there. Um, let's do... Those like that. Play those two. Unlock them. No, we're gonna... So display recast times, yes, that is useful so that when you use an ability there will be a countdown clock on the on the icon. Um hide unassigned slots, that is a preference. It's useful in some situations. One second. So, um, hiding the unassigned slots is just you want to clear up clutter from blocks that aren't full. Um, hot blade is display the numbers if you want to. Uh, enable hotbar cycling button, which allows you to change which hotbar you're on on the first one. Um, include pet hotbar when cycling. Enable drag and drop repositioning, which allows us to do that. If you don't do that, then that goes away. I didn't realize they finally added that. So, um, we will keep that on temporarily, I think. Um,. But there was a way for them to be closer together, left and right. I could be wrong. Um, when the pet hotbar is available, display both play as crossbar, play only the cross hotbar, display the pet hotbar. Play the pet hotbar and hotbar one. Automatically replace cross hotbar one with pet hotbar when mounted. Oh. That is something I'm going to have to play with. And sharing. Shared hotbar. Oh, okay. So, what this means is that when you switch, um, when you change jobs, these are the hotbars that are going to, uh, be different, or be the same between the jobs. Cross. Cross hotbar is mainly used for control pad. So I don't use the cross hotbar. Alright, custom. Expand hold controls. Looks like it's for... 
Enable auto hotbar switching when drawing sheathing weapons. Enable customization for when weapon is sheathed. Enable customization for when drawn. Okay, so it gives you different skills if you are. Okay, that's nice. Um, if you got your weapon sheathed, it will display different skills than if you've got it drawn. So, if you are a role player, that's something you can do. Enable auto hotbar switching when drawing sheathing weapons. Okay. So everything in this will apply. And again, I thought that these were uh could impact them. Oh. That is something new. I didn't. So if you right click the number, it um it changes what what style it is. So new to me. Okay, this is going to be log window settings. So this is our little friend down here. Um, play name type, full name. Yes, chat prompt, font size. 12 works. 12 is the smallest you can get. Um, play world name in chat log when player is on another server. Yes. Enable lip, lip sync during chat. So you'll be talking if you're chatting. Enable profanity filter. No. Uh, display error messages when actions fail. Display recast. No, we do not. We do not like those in the chat log. The reason why I don't like those is because when you're in combat and you're spamming a skill, your chat log will just immediately fill up with those because you are pressing the button over and over. Play altitude error messages. Okay, enable. This means that if you're flying and you go too high, it's going to say you're, you're flying too high. Uh, enable log window item linking. Meaning you can click on an item that somebody has uh, posted in here and it'll pop up over here or wherever you have the pop-up set for. Okay, time stamping, local time, 24-hour format. Uh, log text colors. This is where you get to change things. Out. L. Party blue alliance that emotes. Like to do sort of a. They always white. Okay, we'll apply that. See how the shouts just changed to red. At two. Free company. Got that over there. P team. Don't really remember what I did for PvP. No. Crossworld Link Shell. These we will come to later. Uh, link Shells are different. Um, link Shell is kind of like a non-guild group that you can join that is for specific purposes. So, those can be changed to whatever you want. As you join them, you can change them as well. So, Delt, Act, Ah. I'm probably just going to copy stuff from my other characters for that. Announcement, system messages, I like those. I like the uh, palette colors are different than... I like something that stands out, so we'll go with the purple. Um, battle system messages, gathering system messages. Error messages, echo, novice network announcement, free company, PvP, NPC dialogue. Yeah. Gun 
golly, my mic is uh, taking everything up today. So we will apply the colors. Close that. Um, log filters. General. Battle. Event. Now, what I like to do is I like to add a fourth one here. That is just party. So we've got the log filters now party when you click on this it's going to say what you want to filter into this and for party it's party free company um shells usually link shells And I don't like the fact that you only have four chat tabs that you can have. Otherwise, a lot of these would be cycled into different. But this is to get rid of the people that are yelling, people that are shouting. We'll apply that, close. See how everything over here, you got a logout message. All disappears. Um, however, we're going to change. Free company. That looks right. Oh, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to screenshot and then uh, come through here and redo all the uh, colors at a later time. This is just going through and showing what the different things are. But yeah, when you come in here, you just see what's, what's going to be shown. Battle, usually in the main thing, you don't want all your battle stuff, announcements. Yeah, everything that comes up. Um, I like being able to read what the, the NPCs are saying down here as well, so we do that. Um, battle. They're going to be all the stuff from battle. Announcements. Boot notice. Okay, so that is what we're going to do for those. Um, log detail. Font size. Add timestamp to messages. Apply. Okay. Um, can change the transparency, of course, here. Um, and it's different for each. Um, for each one of the windows that you've got. I like to have the timestamps in there just because um, I like to have the timestamps in there to show um, when certain things happen. And since I last did this, they added that function. So notification sounds. I do not like notification sounds at all when it comes to chatting. That is going to be it for this section. I would go into the system settings, but that's a whole different ball of wax. Bring everything down. Now, we go to HUD layout. So HUD layout shows where everything is on screen. We need to do this. I normally put pet hotbar right there. Hotbar eight right there, hotbar nine. I may get rid of the numbers just because I didn't realize that was an option before now. 
have these, but not the other. Party list is usually fine. Limit gauge is fine. Scenario guide. I like to move over here. Um, alliance list. If I can get a bit larger monitor, things are going to be different, but alliance list I like to put over here under party. Enemy list here. So duty action is something that's really nice to have um, separate. <laughs> um, both gauge. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Okay. Um, so what each of these windows do does. Every single class... Uh, has their own special gauge that they use. Um, I like to put it just to the upper left of my uh, my hotbars. Reason being is... It just keeps it out of the main... It keeps it out of the, the center of the screen. And I don't like anything blocking the center of the screen. Um, and it's in a place where I can see it visually quickly. Um, so we have target bar. Target bar goes close to the top. Status info, enhancements. Status info, enfeeblements. You'll have to move things around a bit in this. Status info, other. Focus target bar. Alliance list two. When you enter alliances, you'll have to um our ten can go here. You'll have to reorganize things as things pop up just for your own um personal uses. Item help on if you're having difficulty selecting something, you can always come to the drop down menu and adjust. Now, a lot of these might change after I do my uh, copy over, because I'm probably going to copy the the information from my main character over here. Which means that the hotbars are going to fill up with items and stuff like that. Um, okay, item help, action help. Those are fine. Status info enhancements. Move over there a bit. Map we can move. Scenario guide. Don't use a scenario guide, you can double up on that. Hot bars. I always thought that these three were combined, but I thought new game plus guide. No. Okay, I see what that is. So that is for New Game Plus. I haven't done New Game Plus on anything yet. So we are going to put that for here for the moment. Progress bar is when you're initiating something, that will start to fill up, and when it finishes, whatever you've done, like gathering something, what have you. Just save that. System, okay, hot bars. A duty. The duty action is an important thing to have, and it's one of the only things that I will have in or near the middle of duty. 
and that is because, um, it will give you a pop-up button that you have to hit in certain instances. Save that. You've got multiple... If you don't like how things are, you can go to different HUD layout for whatever you're doing. So, we will see how that works, and things will get changed as we progress, obviously. Okay, locking these so that, you know... Can't... Oh. Never mind. Locking them prevents cycling through them, and it prevents you picking something up and moving it on the bar. It does not prevent you from actually picking up the thing and moving it. So, we've got that done. Um, we'll unlock it, because Play Guide, these are the defaults. These four are defaults that will show up on your bar when you start. I do not use the Play Guide, so I get rid of it. Uh, teleport. I do not use Teleport outside of using the Travel um, menu. Uh, return. Again, I do not do that outside of the travel menu. Sprint. Always have on the bar because sprint is useful. So, our first quest is to attune yourself to the Aetherite found inside the city. And I know... Okay. So, basics, yeah, we will be definitely dealing with stuff. So this is an Aetherite Shard. Aetherite Shards are important in the, um, they allow quick travel around the city. How do I turn those off? Active health window can be disabled in the UI settings, located under character configuration. Play active help windows. No. Apply. There we go. Okay. I recommend that you sit down and you, you read through all of the, um, the things that I just shut off. The active help stuff. Activating sprint gives you a movement speed increase while you're doing stuff. Has a one minute cooldown. It used to cost, um, it used to cost a, a, a defunct, um, stamina use. They got rid of stamina, thankfully, because it prevented, um, non-magic users from... I'm skipping the cutscenes because I want to experience the story with your character, not my character. Stab is the one that I go through the story mode with. So this is just a learning character that is named for me. Alright, so we need to visit the Gladiators Guild. Every class has its own guild um, for the uh, base classes. So, Gladiator, Marauder, and Pugilist, Lancer, Rogues, uh, Conjurer, um, Ow, Ow, Ow. I, uh, I got my first vaccine yesterday, so my, my, my left arm, I just tried moving it into a normal position, and it hurts, so. Oh, give me a sec.
Sorry about that, just grabbed a Tylenol to help with the pain. And possible inflammation in the area. So, um, yes, the original base classes, which were Gladiator, Marauder, Pugilist, Lancer, Archer, uh, Thaumaturge, Arcanist, and Conjurer. They all have guilds. Rogue was added later, but they also have their own guild. And when you hit certain points in the game, you will um, upgrade these from their base to what, what, what you are now is class, and then what you would upgrade to is the job. And they abandoned that function because they realized it did not work the way they wanted it to. So, um, Dark Knight, Gunbreaker, Samurai, uh, Astrologian, Dancer, Machinist, Red Mage, and to a lesser extent, Blue Mage. Um, those are the jobs that you just get. You have to be at least level 30 for some of them, at least level 50 for others, and I think at least level 60 for a few. So, this is a Pugilist Guild, that's, that's not where I want to go. And you will see that certain, um, yeah, like, to become a Samurai, you need to be level 50. And come and talk to this guy. Way of the Samurai. Level 50. So, the Gladiator's Guild was not through there. That's what I was thinking over there. Okay. So, each city has multiple sections as well. We are in Oda, which is a um, city that's near a desert, hence the motifs. Everything seems sandstony. I'm going to be teaching the basics of tanking with each class that is a tank, but you have to come to your guild. And if you are in, um, if you are the base classes, there are three cities that you can start in. Uh, Limsa, um, Gridania, and Ulda. And depending upon what class you choose to start with, that's dependent upon where you're going to end up. So, any... Uh, quest that you see this plus sign on, that means that there is something that is integral to the core experience of the game, or it unlocks new content, stuff like that. Um, anything that's just a basic exclamation point is going to be a um, just a side quest, not really important to storylines or anything like that. These have the plus sign is uh, integral to like side quest storylines that unlocks stuff. Um, the one that has the, the the meteor look to it are the... Uh... Oh gosh, my brain just doesn't want to work this morning. Um, they are main storyline quests. So they are the quests that you will partake to advance the storyline. Oh, unskippable scene. <clears throat> so we will just speed through it. Have you the strength to live by the sword? Occasionally you'll come to unskippable scenes, and it's because there's a, something you need to interact with in the scene, or it is important. So, we have visited the Gladiator's Guild. Listen to Cese Roga's explanation of the markets. All right. When you first visit any new city, my biggest uh, tip is to locate all of the Ethernet shards and um, click on them. No, I don't like that. You know how I said um, I'd be changing some things as we go through? General. Let's get you back to 25. Fly. Close.
So a lot of starting out is just doing the basic quests that you can apply for. And attuning yourself to all the shards in the city. The benefit of attuning to all of the shards is um, once you have all of them unlocked, then you'll be able to click on one to teleport outside the city, outside one of the gates that's there. Which is extremely beneficial for getting around the city quickly, as one might guess. There are gathering and crafting guilds as well. But we will get to that at a later point. Today we are just going to focus on the basics of um, what to do in starting out. So we are gathering all of the Ethernet shards that are in this section of the city. Uh, the only one that we're not going to get right now is the Alchemist, the Alchemist's Guild, because it's oh, do then Chamber of Rule and Alchemist Guild. And I am so glad that they find it took them like four years, five years to add an Ethernet shard to the marketplace. Before you had to um, go to the Adventurer's Guild in the next map over and then run here. Or if you look at this map, closest one would be the Weaver's Guild. So you run up and then go over here. It's It was a pain in the butt. Okay, so Seseroga. Yes, I was going to change that as well. So. Let's go back to character configuration. We want item settings. Expanded. Apply. Close. We hit inventory. It'll only come up with those two. Got it. All right. Report to Momodi at the quicksand. So. I will show you what the Ethernet travel is like. Click on the shard. All your unlocked things are here. We want to go to the Adventurer's Guild. We have arrived at the Adventurer's Guild, or just outside. Now, one of the reasons that I'm doing this is because players have the option to do a bunch of skipping, and they miss out on a lot of fundamental low-level stuff. So, the next... Um, main story quest is not available until we hit level 4. So, we have to go and do things to get to level 4. What's nice about this is you can check your map. You've got a bunch of low-level quests that you can pick up. My recommendation is grab everything that you can for the starting areas. You know, I really should, like, write out a plan of what I'm going to do, but everything changes on the fly. Nope, we don't have anything up there yet. So you come speak to Wyman, who is the person that introduced us to this area. He's going to give you a quest, which is to deliver unsigned envelopes to Josias. Dias is right over here in the Pugilist Guild. Going there anyway to pick up a quest. We've got uh, Jajakuta here. Collect shrew pelts from snapping shrews in central Thanalin. Hello, Josias. That was a very simple quest. The early quests are easy. You'll get rewards, usually a potion and fire shard. Um, they have recently stopped... Uh... Oh, one second. They have recently stopped 
doing potions as um, something you can make outside of like battle potions, like health potions, you don't get any more in the game because they decided that people aren't using them. And, you know, rightly so, because people are not using them because they are... Um, when you've got, say, um, 150,000 health and the best potion available restores like 10,000 health and you can only use it like once every 90 seconds, 45 seconds. No, people aren't going to use them because they don't restore a sufficient amount of health. Health potions need to be a use it and it restores uh, a decent amount at max level, not at whatever level you are. Um, and let's see, did I haven't gotten any potions yet. We need to go and speak to this person. So they decided instead of revamping the potions and making them actually useful, they're just going to get rid of them. So that's where we're at. The lower level ones are still in the game because, yeah, they can still be useful at low levels, but, you know, being able to, you know, potion yourself at a high level fight would be nice. Yeah, so I'll give you an ex This is restored 32% of your hit points up to a max of 160. I only have 143 hit points. So... Um, yeah, that's, that's an issue in my opinion. They should have kept the potions and just buffed them instead of making them useless. But you'll find that as you go through the game, even the, uh, even the potions that you get that seem useful like right now, are useless once you hit certain areas. Right. She'll accept this quest. Now, when I started out, um, you did not have... You had a lot smaller inventory. You had 100 lots in your inventory, and... Occasionally, you'll get to choose what you want as your um, as your reward from quests. So just choose whichever one you feel is best for you. Uh, at later points, you'll just, at least for me, I choose the things that will sell the most. Sell for the most. We're not going to hit the, the market board today, but we will hit the market board at some point in the future. Okay, um, a lot of the low level is just going to be running around and gathering quests to do stuff with. Obonima. Even if you've got the active help turned off, it will have pop-ups telling you what things have been updated. I, I screwed up there. I will go back. So what I was saying about gathering all of the Ethernet spots. Only two in, um, what is it? Lower Ulda. Depths of Nald. Do that. Grab that. You're now attuned here. Okay, we have a lot of quests in this area, as you can tell. A lot that we can pick up. And the reason that I suggest picking up a lot of quests is because even if it doesn't show up here, you're still marking off things that you've done, and some of the quests overlap. So you'll be doing, um... You'll be doing multiple things for... You'll be getting credit for multiple things. That's what I'm trying to say.
Wow, I've been going for a while. Like I've only been doing this for half an hour, but it's been a lot longer. And again, some quests are going to be really simple like this. Now, if you're playing on PlayStation, I'm not going to be able to uh, give you any tips or hints for um, controls with that. Because I, I haven't played, nor do I plan on doing this on console. The nice thing, though, is that if you're on console, you can play with the people on computer. It's, it's all shared world. Um, unlike other companies that have games like this, Square kind of got their uh, their head on straight when it comes to cross-platform. Which is also why the graphics may not look the best on certain systems. Okay, so... Talk to Wolken. Let's pick up Wolken's quest. Alright, got that. Dazariku. Into that one. Let's go up and get the Hastings strip. We will continue the Great Gladiator and we'll go get, get these as well, but we are going to go upstairs and grab the last two um, Ethernet shards. Ethernet locations. But I was able to... Okay. Ah, uh, yes. So one of the things that... Um, has always bugged me about this game. But I've gotten used to it. Is if a creature... If you can see their nameplate, you can't select them. You have to actually... See, be able to see the monster from the vantage point in order to collect them. So I go right, right there, I can select this Kira. But if I come over here and unclick, I can't click on them because I can't see them. But if I move the camera, I can. So that is something that has bugged the crap out of me in this game for I don't know how long. That, and you can't look up. This is the highest angle of um, upward looking that you can do. You can look straight down, can't look straight up. So, that is just my personal pet peeves with this game, and anytime they've asked for feedback, I've always put in, please let us look up. Um, if the uh, upcoming fan fest for this was not going to be... So, certain... Certain players have chosen to ask questions of the, uh, the development staff. And um, if it were FanFest, you'd get up and you'd stand in front of the microphone and you'd ask your question and they'd respond to it. Okay, so I have attuned to all of the Aethernet shards in Ulda. Now I can exit the Gate of Nald, the Gate of Thal, or the Gate of the Sultana. And I can access the airship landing as an Aethernet de destination. So... Those get unlocked. So, if we weren't in um, people not being sociopathic and... Let's see, how do, how do I want us to phrase that? Um, so, if we were in a state of when we're not in uh, a pandemic, then, yeah, you would be able to go up Go to the fan fest and you know uh speak to the creators directly but since it's going to be done online you gotta sign up for zoom and i don't trust zoom as far as i could you know chuck a mountain so i don't use it and that's what they're having as the requirement for uh, asking questions at the fan fest but the question that i have wanted to ask is why can't we look straight up I mean, you've got a lot of rendering that is directly above people. A lot of screenshots would be nice. Being able to, like, get a straight-up look at certain things.
That sounds horrible when I just realized it. Um, being able to, you know, see what is directly above the character. I mean, you even go into first person and that's as high as you can go. And that is one of my biggest pet peeves in this game. So we've got all of those. We are going to go pick up the remaining quests and I missed one at the Alchemist Guild, so we're going to go hit the Alchemist Guild again. You got me going on a tear. <clears throat> now one thing that I do... Um, want to point out in this game is, aside from the fact that it is fun, They've got wonderful storylines everywhere, and unlike other MMOs I could name that are, uh, when you think of MMO, it's the one that most people think of, the content is actually updated fairly frequently, and if there's going to be an expansion coming soon, you'll get content shortly before the expansion. And you won't sit for 18 months in the same content with no updates, aside from, you know, bug fixes. And even then, they don't fix bugs that are actually a problem. I mean... You look at World of Warcraft, and, you know, if you enjoy it, that's fine. I do not like the way the company works, and I do not like the way they've worked for a long time. There are, there, there's a bug from Vanilla that is still prevalent, that has never been fixed that has just been ignored for, what is it, like 12, 13, 14 years now? Whenever World of Warcraft came out? So, they don't care about fixing the old content, they only care about making new content, but the new content you have to wait forever for because they sit on their thumbs and don't release it. Or, Oh, we've got an expansion coming out, so we've got everybody working on the expansion and nobody's working on, you know, something that to tide the players over. And it's why the population decreases, or at least when I was playing, population of players decreased so dramatically um, after the last content was released. You'd have like maybe a month or maybe two or three weeks after people started... Uh, farming the uh, the final content and then they would just stop because there was no need to farm that extra content because as soon as the next expansion came out the the weakest gear in the expansion was on par with the strongest gear from the uh, the raids so it, it just felt like a slap in the face with, oh, but we want people coming back and, and playing to be able to, like, be on par with everybody else. That's understandable. Final Fantasy XIV? They do it appropriately. The gear that you get, um, the, the top level gear that you can get at the end of an expansion, like, the best gear is on par with gear that you'll get at maybe level 75 when you are running through uh, dungeons. So it's level 70 top tier gear is going to be comparable to level 75 dungeon acquired gear. Which is a very intelligent way of doing it. It allows players that, that actually went through and got stuff like their epic items to feel like they've accomplished something. Instead of having it, oh I had this, this entire set of epic armor and I'm trading it out for, you know the lowest level drops from trash mobs. So, it just feels like it is not a game that rewards your efforts, rewards your accomplishments. It just feels like a game that, um, hit the feeder bar, get loot. Hit the feeder bar, get loot. And their storylines have gotten stale because they keep recycling the same storylines. They just put a different character in the bad guy role. And it's the literal same storyline over and over and over. 
here. Experience the storylines. Granted, I wish that I could experience the 1.0, all the storylines that uh, took place before 2.0, A Realm Reborn. But I can go onto YouTube and watch storylines there for it. Yeah, the original release of 14 was not the best, but they... Uh, they took the servers down, and they reworked the game and re-released it, and it is, in my opinion, the best MMORPG out there right now for storyline. If you like a story-based game, this is a game for you. Easily, easily 160 hours worth of storyline to go through from beginning to end with all the expansions right now. Conversely, Warlords of Draenor was released, and when they were about to release the next expansion for World of Warcraft, I played it. During the seven days that I had access to it, I got my one character to max level during that time. And, um, all I can say is that Storyline, I sat there and I read through the storyline. It took less than eight hours to get through the entire storyline for the entire expansion. That is pitiful. That is absolutely reprehensible. So, um, yeah, if you're looking for a story-based game, come join us over at uh, uh, Final Fantasy XIV. No, I am not... Um, I'm just running around in circles, just talking. I am not, um... I am not compensated in any way by the people at Squaresoft for Square Enix for saying this. I'm saying this as a fan of the game and as a fan of, you know, good stories. Even the goofy stories in this are good. Okay. I need to check. <clears throat> so there are a lot of functions that have been removed from the game. And um, just as a, a history of things, there were two types of things that you could get that were grade one matter. One of them was to, uh, what is it, carbonized matter. Carbonized Matter has been removed from the game. What you could do with Carbonized Matter was you needed to get the appropriate grade or lower, or the appropriate grade or higher of the Carbonized Matter. And what it was used for was affixing materia to equipment. Materia is basically just like gems in other games. So you would get the gems, the materia in this case, and you'd need the matter to affix them to your armor. Or your weapon. None of my gear has slots on it, so I can't show you what that looks like. Yet. However, it is an important part of um, maximizing your stats on your, on your gear. We will get to that eventually. But the carbonized matter was removed because it just, it felt like an unnecessary step, and a lot of people did not like it. Welcome. Okay, so, Slash, welcome. And they perform an emote. Excellent, I dare say. It will work for me myself. Now hurry off, we need those people. For this one, you need to go and do emotes at certain certain NPCs. We'll respond in kind. 
But a lot of these low-level quests are meant to introduce you to the various systems that are in the game. This one is the emotes. And the emotes can be found under social emotes. So if you are looking for what various things are, I will, in a future video, go through all of the menu options and what they do. Even if they're not unlocked on this character, I will show you what's available there. And what's nice is if you don't want to type out all the emotes, I'll show you for this last one. Just find the emote that you're looking for, drop it on your bar. But for the last one, Lurking Leech. Probably not the one that we do the welcome to. Okay, that is the one we do it to. But, um, yeah, where was I on my little rant earlier? If you want a game that's going to give you, you know, at least twice the amount of story that um, an entire expansion does in the other game per patch, then yeah, come over, come over here. We will be glad to have you. The community here is usually really good. You'll find some people that have transferred from other games that still don't fully understand that this is a welcoming community and one where you don't just attack somebody for the sake of um, being a jerk. But again, you still get people like that because we've had influxes from other games. Especially when, uh, like, uh, waiting for other games' expansions to come out, and we've got some converts. I played World of Warcraft almost religiously up until Mists of Pandaria. And in the middle of Mists of Pandaria, this game was released. And Activision Blizzard at the time, and still do, they have a habit of trying to snipe um, other content that's being made. And they will move their release dates to coincide with other companies' release dates to pull people away from those. Which, you know, business wise, I understand that, but. A lot of times their content doesn't hold up to uh, the other content, but because of their history of AAA games, people flock to it. But I wouldn't even put World of Warcraft as a AAA game anymore. I'd put it, um, I'd put it down with. Uh, I mean, there, there are indie developers that are making better content. So much better content. So, um, sorry for the rant on, on Blizzard. They just, they are the most, um, visible of the, uh, competitors. And it's funny just how much they when they realized that Final Fantasy XIV was going to be a credible threat to them, they started copying aspects of XIV, like the Relic Weapon. Which we will get to, and I will get a Relic Weapon on this character, just for the sake of getting one on this character, and showing the steps to get to it. But, um, yeah, we want to go, go outside the Gate of the Sultana, Western Thanglin. So, the mapping achievements. 
If it is not current content when your first time visiting the map, you will unlock it. If it is current content, the content will not unlock everything at once. So, combat, combat. So, being a low-level character, you only have access to one skill. And I tend to put that skill at three just because I have my reasons. Uh, buffs, I tend to put up at the third bar. I don't have everything set up, so it's going to be a different button layout. But we're not, we're not there yet. Before the next video, I'm going to copy all my settings over and... Colors will be different. Everything will be different. So at low levels, you can sit there and auto-attack something to death. They're not going to do enough damage to you to kill you. But the fight goes slowly. So it's best to use your skills. First skill that you get as a gladiator is Fast Blade. And what's nice is when you are out here uh, doing a quest, the quest targets will have an icon above them. You gotta kill the ones that have the icon above them. There are others. Oh, I haven't unlocked them yet. Okay. So there are other things that will unlock as you do things. One of them that got si There's one function that kind of disappeared after it kind of got transformed into something else. And it's called the hunting log. The hunting log was different for every class and it was another way of leveling up your character. give you sort of a variety because you had so many different classes to play at low levels. I'm really hoping in one of the upcoming expansions that they give us new low level areas to go through and explore. Alright, we've gotten our second skill, which is Riot Blade. Riot Blade, when you use it with in a combo, you do Fast Blade, then Riot Blade, and it will have an outline border around it that shows you that it's ready for the combo state. Watch that section, you'll see it pop up. The combo only works if you connect something. And now instead of... Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, yawn. So we've completed those two quests that were out here. I don't see anything else on the map aside from low-level quests to do. So we are going to go around to Central Thanalan. Going to explore. But you will find Aetherite. Aetherite. I interchange the two. Just because AE spelling... Makes me think uh, an AE sound, but it's an E sound based upon pronunciation and the language that that comes from. So, Etherite. Anyways, <clears throat> I was saying something and I forgot myself. So. The areas that you have quests will show up as these big red spots on the map. Uh, the blue spots that have the symbol in the middle are going to be fates. Fates are another way of earning experience in this game. They are one of the best ways of leveling up if you have run out of other stuff to do. They can be quick to get through, especially at low level. Um, 
if you are above the level, you'll have to sink your level down, which is important for various reasons. It's to prevent extremely high-level characters from coming into low-level areas and just slaughtering everything before the low-level people can get there. So it's beneficial in that respect. It also means that, you know, players that are running content together can do the same stuff. There's also a level uh, level sync system for the dungeons, the duties that you enter. You will be synced down to levels, meaning the skills that are above the level you can't use. But um, everything else in there is uh, at level, so yeah. There's a level cap of 18, I think, on the... There's a level cap of 18 on the levels that... Um... One second, my throat's not, not playing nice. getting over the cold. So, you have the level caps in the in the dungeons. And the first ones you come into, I think you can get in at level 15, but the highest you can be in there is level 18. Okay, so something else that I want to discuss. Um, oh. So, I was talking about the hunting log earlier. The hunting log was replaced with hunt targets. This guy is one of those hunt targets. He is a non um, non aggressive target, meaning he's a B rank. The B rank targets you can hunt once a week, and you will get rewards if you are of level and have the right ticket. Other than that, they're kind of pointless. Now, you'll see that the, the, the symbol next to the name is green. The symbol next to these guys are green. This means they are passive. They will not attack unless you attack. If they've got a red face next to them, or a red icon next to them, that means they are aggressive, and if you get too close, they are going to attack. So we are going to leave them alone. I am going to go up and start that fate momentarily. I am going to take care of this quest first. Get the last kills on this. I just need five of them. Now if you have a hunt target, there will be a symbol that appears above the target's name. Like this has the quest target above it. It makes it a lot easier to find what you're looking for if you're not quite sure what the target is. And on the minimap, you'll see that it will light up the targets and where they are in relation to you. So, now that that finished, everything went away. But there is a fate over here. I am going to start and hopefully complete it. I don't know if I'm uh don't know if I'm under geared for it. Received no extra gear, so I There we go. One level below what it is um recommended. Ah, yes. Grishild the Ungood. Attack. Yeah, I might die. But that's okay. You'll get to see what happens when a character dies. 
I could run away. But I need to head inside anyway. I will potion. Cooldown on that is 25 seconds. So I might make it through this, just based upon potions. Um, but yes, uh, you see how it's got the, uh, the green next to the huge hornet's name right there, but it's got the fate symbol next to this one. You have to be in the fate and of the level of the fate in order to participate in the fate. Let's activate our fight or flight. Yep, I am going to die, which is okay. You'll get to see what happens when you die. There we go. First death. You will return to whichever etherite you started in as your main city. And whichever one that you choose to make um, your home point. When you set your home point, that is where you always return to when you die. And you can move your home point. Um, that is also where if you use return, that handy little skill right there, that's where you will return to as your home point. So let us turn in some quests. And probably get level 6 from the quests. But that is the main reason that I gather all the quests that I can that are of level. And you may not want to grab all of the low level quests because it can make leveling up the other jobs a little difficult. But not impossible. That's one reason the hunt log is there. The hunt log helps you get to 15. I have not unlocked the hunt log, but when I do, it will be available for any job that I pick up, and it's a different log for each each class that I try it with. Up to level 50. And you will get a um, static amount of experience for it. So, we can get headgear or tin piece. Let us get the headgear. We don't have any headgear. We can't use it till we're level 5. Right. So we are almost there. Quests here? Nope. They're all upper echelons. The next area. But I'm level 4, meaning that I can take the next storyline quest. And you want to progress the storyline quests because as you progress the storyline, more side quests become available. Grab the gloves. Well, the quests. Next one of these is available at level 5. So you have the class quests and you have job... Okay, hunting log just opened up. So after you do your first job quest, or class quest, um, the hunting log will open up. And as you unlock the other classes, those will unlock as well. And you get rewards based upon what you kill, and these are given right away. As soon as you kill three star marmots as a gladiator, you'll get 180 after you unlock the quest, or the, the, the hunting log. And these are only for the base jobs. Base classes. Anything else to in? No, but what's at the hut? Okay, we got a quest that we were up there. Let us teleport to the Chamber of Rule. Now, we will eventually get to dungeons. Dungeons open up at level 15, but you also have to be completing the story quests. The first one opens up 
Um, I think after you visit all three of the different nations. Or the three different... Uh, yeah. Ridanya, Limsa Lominsa, and Ulda. We will get to tips and tricks um, at uh, later points. Right now, we're just doing basics. I chose Gladiator as my starting because it's a lot easier to get into get into duties when you are a tank. And uh, Warrior used to be my favorite, um, which is Marauder that turns into Warrior as the job. But they removed, like, all of Warrior's healing abilities. So, Warrior's survivability is, like, crap. Now, things that I could solo before they made that change, I have to pull out my bird to heal me. Or, it's just, oh, so close. So close to level. So we're going to go out to one of these spots. So with Warrior, um, you had Steel Cyclone, which had the benefit of... This is a later uh, thing. So this is the Hunt Mark. That little uh, symbol right there. Which I can't zoom in upon. <laughs> that says that this is a Hunt Mark. But, um, yeah, Warriors had an ability called Steel Cyclone, which was an AoE attack that uh, restored a little bit of health for each target that it hit. They revamped Warrior, and they took away the healing aspect of it, so... Um, their survivability on large pulls diminished considerably. So, you see, entry complete, Gladiator 0-2. I got the experience for it instantly. So we're going to run back into Ulda. We're going to grab the next story quest. We're going to grab the next uh, gladiator quest as well. And as you level up, more quests will unlock. Let's grab these first. So always check back, and whenever you hit a new hub, uh, quest hub, just grab everything and go out and do stuff and burn everything in at once if you can. If not, there's a lot of backtracking, which becomes easier once you unlock your chocobo, which is level 30, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think they changed that. But unlocking your chocobo does take a lot of, um, you'll be grinding a few fates because it requires company seals. We will get to Grand Company stuff at a later time. Wait, running all over the place. Speak with Mimi Shu. Deliver Oswald. Okay, so they have just given me quests to go out to visit um, some of the outlaying, um, some of the other quest hubs, which is good because it's how you progress and advance in this. And it shows you where to go next.
Okay, tell the marauders outside the quicksand to face slash me. Brucey Wayne. They're not from this world. But you'll find some names in this game that are funny. I'm gonna go to the Adventurer's Guild. No, we don't want to go to the Adventurer's Guild. The Quicksand... Yes, the quick. I'm thinking... Okay. So, me. I'm getting things confused in my head. One of the main quest point or er, quest hubs in this game is going to be called the Waking Sands. That's why I got the Quicksand and Waking Sands mixed up because it has been a long time since I've done these low-level stuff. So this is another quest that is teaching you various uh, emotes, specifically motioning to yourself. Occasionally when you do a quest like this, it will turn into a combat. You'll have to fight someone. But... Those are few and far between. And occasionally you will lose in those fights, because... You don't know the mechanics, and a lot of those fights are meant to teach you certain mechanics. So, don't be discouraged if you do end up getting killed. Death is not bad in this game. Other games you get severely punished. Um, there are some instances in this game that won't have to be worried about for a long time, where death does get punished. So you're only set back on time. Search for witnesses at the Scorpion's Crossing. So quests. Ow! Ow! Shoulder. <laughs> Um, let's talk a moment about quests. So you have complete. Complete will show you the list of quests that you've completed, and there are several subcategories in each section. This is Shadowbringers, which is the current uh, expansion. It will show you all the stuff for Shadowbringers. You click this one for A Realm Reborn, which is 2.0. Um, Heaven's Word and Stormblood, which are the previous two expansions to this one. Um, main scenario is always going to be here, but these are the main scenario quest lines. If you don't know if you've finished a certain quest, this is where you can look it up. And if you are trying to like unlock your chocobo and you don't know what quests you need, you can look at an outside source, there are plen of, plenty of uh, websites that you can look at for that information. And you look up the quest name, and then you can check and see what the prerequisite quests are, and see where you picked those up, and if you've completed them or not. 
Uh, then you've got the Chronicles of a New Era, the Primals. Primals are a subset of bosses that are unlocked where you can get specific gear. Some of them are main story quests required, some of them are not. But most of them are going to be like side quest type stuff. But still very useful for lore, storyline, and um, <clears throat> getting really neat looking gear. Side quests. Every single side quest that is in the game. And it's separated by region as well. So if you're looking for a side quest that you need to do, this is where you come. I believe... Yeah, this is the Primals, Bahamut, uh, Crystal Tower, Alexander. You don't need to worry about any of that right now. Uh, that's in the future. Beast Tribe Quests. My voice just hates me today. Beast Tribe Quests. These are quests that you can do to increase your experience levels. Experience in various um, cases. If you are below the cap level, which for the first four of these, as a combat class, the first four of these, if you're below level 50, you should get maximum experience for performing them. If you are above the level, you'll get like 200 experience, which is negligible at that level. Uh, the Ixil quests are crafting specific, and then you get into the Heaven's Word section, and then the um, Storm Stormblood section. We haven't really had... Uh, yes, we have. The current Beast Tribe quests are going to be separate. Now you've got the class and job quests. If you're wondering what was the last one that you completed in a chain, because some quests reward skills. And they're much needed skills. Like, what is this? This one just gives me a sword. It doesn't give me a skill. Um, let's open up the quests again. So that is where you keep track of Oh, did I did I do the bard quests yet? No, I haven't done the Bard Quest. Let's go do the Bard Quest. So, that is where you check those. Other Quests, Grand Company, Seasonal Events, and Special Quests. These will become... I will go over those when they become relevant. And then Leave Quests. Leave Quests are... another abandoned method of getting experience. I really liked it, but it did not... People did not do it as much as they should have. Um, they're repeatable quests that you have a number of allowances for per day. Since I have not unlocked them, I have no allowances. So, that is quests. And then you go to current, and these are the ones that you are currently working on. And they will be divided between, like, quests, and then you have, like, leave quests down here, and what have you. So... That is the, um, that is the rundown of quests and how they're broken down between the various things and where to go to look for stuff. I like the fact that completed quests are listed here because it's nice to know, have I done this quest? Have I done this prerequisite quest to unlock that one? And you don't have to, like, guess or, like, look at um, a quest chain that started like three different areas away from where you are currently at that you did not um, progress. It's uh, what another thing I'm grateful for is um, the, the story relevant quests. These did not have the pluses on them when the game first started. They started adding those because people were trying to find the quests that mattered to unlocking certain jobs or um, unlocking certain functions, features. So they added the plus so that people would be able to find out 
What's going on? So we're going to head out into... I think this is cent Central? Yes, Central. We got quests over here to finish. We got one, I think, that... No, we don't go to Blackbrush yet. But... Uh, level 5. Actually, I need to look at that. Um... Hills? Oh, that's... Character. Actions and traits. Okay, so... They have streamlined this down considerably. Um... Traits. So, when this game first released, this section for class was huge. You had a lot of skills that were class skills. And then you had role skills, which were different. Um you actually selected which ones you wanted to use. Traits, you would get like 30, 40 different traits as you were leveling up that were... Um, they basically streamlined everything down to make it easier for players so that they don't have to select the right skills, I guess you could say, for certain instances. Like, um, stuff like Rampart was a Paladin skill. So you had to get Paladin up to level 8, let's just say, and then you had to select the skill as one that you'd activate on a different tank. They've streamlined it to where the skills are just there for the, the, the type of role you're in. The traits are specific for the class. The actions, again, are specific to the class. I've only got Paladin, so... Er, Gladiator, so I don't have any of the Paladin stuff here. Paladin will become available at level 30, and then that will unlock more skills. And there will be a Paladin job quest to collect the armor for Paladin. But you will unlock extra skills. I don't know if they've changed it, but you would unlock extra skills by doing um, the class quests as well. And it's how you would get, like, the level 50 skills for some... Wrong thing. Yeah, it looks like they... Yeah. I'm pretty sure Circle of Scorn was the level 50 skill that you got. So, there's that. They've changed a lot since I last leveled a character. Not in current content. So the things that have changed are... The things that have changed are plentiful. Alright, so we get to choose. Oh, that's right, we can equip the new gear. Level 6 now. Grab that. Giginasu. Or Giginasu. Let's grab. Alright. We can equip. Equip. We can equip. And every gear has its own look. Some gear share the same look, but that's just... Just to keep things simple. You know how it goes. Um, we search for witnesses at Scorpion's Crossing. 
Oh, we haven't been there yet. Western Thanalan. Scorpion's Crossing, so that's where we need to go. For that. So we will come back here and do that search, but we are going to head over to um, Western Thanalan and complete the Paladin quest so we can get the, the Gladiator quests. From this point forward, the job and class are going to be interchangeable in what I'm saying. So please um, understand that if I say Archer, when I'm playing Bard, they're interchangeable. Um, the only one that's not going to be is going to be um, Arcanist. Arcanist is syn synonymous with uh, Summoner. But um, Scholar is the healer that goes with Arcanist. And it was an attempt... Where am I going? It was an attempt at having two, like like a split choice, but it just made it, it made it too difficult, and they haven't separated the two. I don't think they plan on separating the two because it would just be too much of a headache with reworking uh, reworking quests. So if you're going to be starting out and you want to get a DPS and a non DPS class um, worked out like leveled simultaneously do Arcanist you'll start out as a DPS but once you hit 30 you can take a healer if you do the quests properly the main reason the, the, the biggest reason to do the, um, the class quests for the base classes is to unlock the jobs because without the job, you are not going to... You're not going to do very well in the future. I do highly recommend whenever you see a hunt log thing on your tier that you try to finish the hunt log. Some enemies will be in dungeons. Some enemies you will not have access to because you have not um, unlocked that map yet. So do not feel bad if you cannot find what you're looking for. Many times they will be in dungeons. So just... Pay attention. Okay. Did you see that little card that sh appeared right above that character? The thing that flashed for a moment? That was them initiating a leave quest. And based upon... They're, they're gladiators, so they're going to be going and doing a combat leave quest. There's gathering and crafting leave quests, and the crafting is the easiest way to level up your crafting skills. Alright, Oswell, here's your package. Complete the quest. We get a new chest piece. Okay, we will come back to that. We will come back to that. I don't want to do housing today. Housing will be next one or the one after that.
But we do have people participating in the fate over here, so... Someone riding their chocobo. Oh. Okay. Sometimes you will gather something, and an enemy will pop up. So you just kill the enemy, and progress on. that back. Those are NPCs fighting things. Total Eclipse. Okay, Total Eclipse is... I can't... Okay. So, Total Eclipse. It's a weapon skill. It is the AoE skill for Paladin. The main AoE threat generation for uh, Gladiator and Paladin. It will hit all enemies within range, which generates threat. And I think level 10 is when we get the, uh, the shield stance. Basically the tanking stance. What you turn on when you actually want to pull threat. Rusty Coblin. Yeah, I'm almost dying, so I'll use a potion. The fate. This is the last kill that we'll need to complete this fate. Um. So. Information regarding fates. And I will probably go over this again in the future. When you enter a fate, there is a maximum level that you can be for that fate. You will have to level sync down if you want to participate, otherwise you won't be able to hit anything. Um, you won't be able to uh, do anything to the enemies. However, um, if you are above the level of a fate, and you engage it, and you remove your uh, level sync and go back to your, your max level, the enemies will still be attacking you. So... Doing that doesn't get rid of the threat that you have generated from that. Um, the other thing to pay attention to with that, and it's one of my favorite strategies, is when you are in a bait that lowers your health, that lowers your level, and you are getting close to dying, desync, use a potion, then resync. The reason that I recommend doing this is because your maximum health will be higher. So this does a maximum of 160. Say I get synced down to level 2 for a fate, and I lose like 20 hit points. Not a big issue here, but at higher level ones it can be. Um, it just restores more health so that when you drop back down and you lose health from lowering your level, you will have more health yield. I will probably demonstrate that later as well. Um, the other thing about fates, there are three levels of um, uh, success in them. You've got bronze, silver, and gold. Bronze, you'll get just a little bit of experience for and if you are late to a fate that's being uh, worked on by a lot of people, then that is going to be an issue for you, because you'll probably just get bronze. Bronze tends to occur when you just, like, hit something once. Um, silver is common if there are a lot of people there and you're not in a party. Um, gold means you've done a certain amount of... You've hit a certain threshold, and... That's the highest you can get, and you usually get special rewards on certain fates as well. Like, occasionally you'll get a minion, or, um, usually it's a minion. But, um, if you are doing fates for, <coughs> if 
you're doing fates for um like relic weapon drops which i'll come back to when when we reach there uh you need to have gold in order to get those drops it's just the way the game functions you have one that is not housing so Um, damage, okay. Kill things that fall off. Parasitic ladybug. Interesting. Wait. Fine. Okay, we have to inspect a Beakwa Slugger. Now we can turn it in. If you're trying to get a quest from an NPC, all quests will be completed before you can accept the new ones. So if there's a bunch of quests from one character, pick them all up if you can. Um, what was I talking about? Merchant Mender, okay, so your gear will take damage over time, and it's just from wear and tear, the usual stuff, so you just repair, it's it's a nominal fee, I mean, it's, it's really cheap, if you have crafting classes leveled, which I do not have because I can't do that yet, um, you will have the option of repairing, and that is where the Dark Matter comes into play. This re grade 1 repairs equipment for levels 1 through 10, so anything that's below level 10 can be repaired. Grade 2 does everything below level 20, I think, and then after that it starts going by every, every 10 or 20. But um, every expansion they add a new one, so that will repair everything below it. That's one reason that I like to, you know, when I do level classes, like I will do all the tanks at once so that all the tank gear that I acquire is the same. So I don't have like five different pieces of gear that are different levels for different stages of that class. Um, gosh. And they occasionally put in the higher level things like the giant tortoise as something that, you know, for me it seems kind of realistic. You got, um, higher level things that if you accidentally hit, you gotta run away from. Or if you're feeling, uh, adventurous, you can try to kill one. Actuar. One of the mascots of the games. You've got the Cactuar, you've got the Moogle. Don't need to attack that one. You need to find those other boxes though. There's one. Now, when you are looking for stuff in the game, a lot of times it will appear as like a shimmering spot like that. So you're not searching everywhere for everything. Last one's gonna be over there, up those stairs. All right, we can complete the Paladin's quest. Gladiator's Quest. Alright, we'll finish these two quests, and then we will head into the city and get ourselves a new sword. Cactuar Blood. Okay.
for anybody just joining me today, I am leveling a new character and at the same time I am explaining the ins and outs of the game from the vantage point of a new character. This is a learning stream for this game. And if anybody has any questions, I would be more than happy to answer them. As for right now, we are going to complete a low-level quest to get ourselves a new weapon. It will help considerably. If I go off on a tangent and I don't finish the sentence that I'm talking about, uh, feel free to remind me, because I tend to do that. The trains... I, I, I... Okay. You think of Thoughts as a train station. Mine has, like, every stall full and more coming and going. So it's not, uh... Not easy to focus on some things occasionally. I am also not, um... I am not following the quest. I, I'm not, like, reading the quests or doing the storyline um, to be shown, because this is purely for learning how to do various aspects of the game, not for watching of the story. So if you are tuning in to see story, I apologize. You're not going to see story with this. So the next quest is available at level 10. Three levels away, so we have to go and find something to do. So we're going to head to Central Thanalan. Now, if you have unlocked all of the Aetherite, you should have access to the quick travel to get out of the city. I think I will do a quick shore up of what we've mostly gone over during the stream, when we reach the end of the stream. So yeah, after a little bit, I've, I'm a one-eyed warrior, wearing a nice breastplate, carrying a sword. Give him a pretzel, eat food. Always beneficial to check the map. See which one is going to be closer if you've got multiple destinations. Saves a lot on the running. But all of the enemies around here are not going to be aggressive. Uh, there is going to be one exception to low-level zones for aggressive enemies. And um, if you run across them, you will die. So I mentioned earlier the, um, the hunt targets. The hunt targets, if they're a B rank, they are going to be non-aggressive. If they are an A rank, they will be aggressive. If they are an S rank, they are going to be aggressive. And um, yeah, you're not going to survive. So don't worry about getting killed if you run into one of those. You'll just have to respawn and avoid that spot until somebody kills it. The A ranks, I believe, have a one hour timer and the S ranks have a 24 hour timer, but also require certain conditions to be met to be spawned. I had a friend who was working on a an achievement that required killing 1,000 S ranks. And, um, yeah. Took him a long time to get that. Was it 100? Um, I will go over the achievement section more later.
hunt. Okay. Oh, that is new. That is. One that he was going for. Say they were going for was okay, play 5,000 S rank. And when they are on a 24 hour respawn, um, and you have to meet certain conditions, you're getting, you're spending a lot of time doing that. Because that will require, oh, you need to get 2,000 to get this reward. That's a lot of hunting. That is a lot of hunting. I think he was just going for the 2,000 because he wanted the mount, but um, 2,000, if you're lucky, maybe four or five a day. Though, now that you've got the ability to cross servers to do it, that might not be as difficult. I do have the bronze sword, so we are going to take bronze pieces. Right, we're skipping story. Because if you want to experience the story, please come join. There is a free trial up to level 60. And, um, you know, I really should put my referral number on my page. Just in case anybody wants to come in and join. Um, I learned that some servers will shut down to new characters being made uh, during peak hours. So if you want to make a new character, you'd have to wait till early morning. Which is what I had to do with this character, because I tried to make it middle of the day. And uh, game said no. Okay, we are entering a special instance. And I'm probably going to cut out anything that is story related. Special instances you have to engage in occasionally, and these are ones that you can die in. We got a new skill. But I, you're going to see if you're if you're watching this, there are going to be spoilers. Um, but I will do my best to to eliminate storyline spoilers. You'll see characters that'll show up. So, um, yeah. I'm not trying to spoil any part of the game for you, I'm trying to teach. And I am skipping story because it's really worth um, learning it and enjoying it yourself. And if you do use one of the potions to get to max level, um, you'll miss out on the story. So be warned with that. So, they have introduced a lot of different paths to level up these days. Um, initially, you just had quests, and the leap quests, the hunting log, the dungeons, and dungeons didn't really give much experience. You could run like three or four and not even get a full level. That's changed. You're guaranteed probably about half a level per run. And your first run on the random roulette every day is going to give you a bonus. So, something to look forward to. Um, but it was mainly just like the leave quests, the hunt log, 
and once you reached a certain point, you hit like maximum saturation and you couldn't do... Baits were the only way you could make experience relatively quickly. Let's skip. So that was an instanced uh, fight, meaning nobody else can join you, you can't have your uh, chocobo companion out with you, um, you're by yourself. There are some instance fights where you can have other people join you, but they are not common. When doing main storyline, it's usually just by yourself, because you're supposed to be by yourself in the storyline. Alright, I think... We might be calling it soon. We're going to... Just because I want to... Uh, I wanted to get something done today. I think I've gotten something done today, and I need to think about where to go next with everything. So, we've grabbed that quest as a means of where to go. We are going to travel, return, return to the steps of Nald. So, in today's stream, in today's video, we have gone over character configuration. We went through every single um, section of this. Uh, some of it I know, some of it I don't. Um, it's going to be changing between now and the next time I stream because I'm going to be copying the character data from another character to match my preferences and what I'm used to. So expect a different screen layout, different stuff like that. Uh, don't be shocked. Um, we went over. Um, we went over the quests. We went through current and completed quests, and where to find the stuff there. Um, what else did we go over? We went over. I haven't gone over the different classes yet. Um, we went over a little bit of the skills. Um, the low-level skills for, for Gladiator, at least. We went over the hunting log. And how the hunting log changes once you hit level 50. Uh, you no longer go... Yeah, we went over those. <laughs> um, we went over the the heads-up display, and how to reorganize stuff there. Um, I think I'll just go through the menus first time, next time. Um, we haven't done housing yet. I think shells we talked a little bit about, but we haven't done anything. Um, we went over... I think that's everything we've gone over. Uh, Menu-wise, we went over the different quest icons. Like, this is going to be a story quest. Main story quests are going to be the meteor shape. Um, there will be a few other type of quest icons that we will come across, and I will explain what those are when we get there. Um, but, yeah, I think that covers everything we've gone over today. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you found it informative. Um, I am sentient dessert. I will see you soon for another uh, learning video, another tutorial. So um, if there are any questions, please ask them in the comments or um, come visit me on my Twitch stream and ask me when I'm live. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, as always, be kind out there. Have a good solar cycle. Take care of yourself. Take care of others. Please, please be... Be safe, and I will see you soon. In the meantime, I am going to go and raid one of my friends, because I'm on Twitch. Let's see who's on.
I don't get to raid her ever, so we're going to go over and hit Tiny Asparagus. She's playing Monster Hunter World, and that is a fun, fun game. So we're going to head over there momentarily, and uh, I will see you all in the next video, in the next stream. Take care.